All right. Ed here from Clicks Geek, and I am with Ryan Stewart. What's up, Ryan? Ed, how we doing, man? Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, so, Ryan, I read one of your books years ago. We've known each other for probably close to a decade now, but yeah. read one of your books a few years ago, really enjoyed it. And you recently just came out with a new book, um, which I read and enjoyed. And yeah, there you go. So hey, talk to the people, uh, tell people who you are, what the book's about, give us a little context. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the marketing space for about 15 years, primarily agency business consulting. I've sold sold an agency, currently operate three different consultancies. And um, I, one of the companies that I operate is called the Blueprint Training. And it's a consulting training program specifically for agencies, mostly search agencies too. Uh, SEO is probably like 70%, sorry, 90% of the clients that we have inside there. This book is what I call kind of like my my manifesto, my blueprint to building an agency business because I've done it four times now. Um, I've gotten four different agencies to over seven figures. Um, like I said, I currently operate really three different agency consulting-based businesses. And this is a very, very simple, very short too. It's only 100, 120 pages, um, but a very simple blueprint and framework to building a business. There's what I call the five pillars. Uh, I break those down. It's an evergreen framework, super simple. And um, yeah, I'm excited to dive in and talk about it because I think no matter what stage you're in with your agency business or whether you're thinking about starting an agency business or becoming a consultant, this really provides really, really good groundwork, framework, foundational work for you to build on. Because when I look around the market now, um, there's a lot of things going on between like rampant inflation, between hyper competition with agencies. And, uh, you know, you open up your LinkedIn DMs and there's 50 people pitching you different things. It's a good way to stand out. Um, and it's really not what you think. There's no hacks or tricks or anything here. It's really about good foundational business practices. Because I think a lot of us too, we get into this business learning it through like a Facebook group or YouTube, because for the most part, they don't really have a lot of formal education programs around search marketing and social media marketing, et cetera. And if, if they do, they're they're pretty dated because they just can't keep up with the speed of the market. Um, and a lot of the information that's missing from that type of education that a lot of us came up through, and I'm not knocking that because I learned about SEO through a Facebook group myself. Um, but a lot of what's lacking there is it's focused on the tactics, right? It's focused on the link building and the keyword research and the things that tend to draw a lot of eyeballs and clicks, but it's not focused on the foundational business principles of it, right? And a lot of us get into this business and we're like, yeah, great. I'm making 10 grand a month, 15 grand a month, but I'm stuck and I've been stuck and I'm, I'm working too much and I can't pull myself out. Um, and I'm making 15 grand a month, but I'm not making 15 grand a month, if you know what I mean. So it addresses a lot of those things that a lot of us are Kind of stuck with in our businesses um and i'm excited like i said excited to dive into them and talk about them today all right so one of the one of my favorite parts of the book is the um is the productization product yeah. offer talk to me about um when when i originally got an agency and i think the same was for you it was kind of like you'd take on anybody and basically anything they'd ask you to do and that was kind of how we we operated because i didn't know any better and it wasn't until um, I think I first heard it from uh, Tim Connolly, um, Productized Service, and some of those guys over there. But talk to me about uh, talk to me about your aha moment on why things need to be productized and what that even means and how you implement yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So bef before the pro so like that's pillar two of the five pillars, right? Before okay. we talk about productization, there's something I have to address before, which is what I call market offer fit. Right, and this to me is is the crux of why so many agencies and consultants struggle today. So the the concept of productization is essentially systems, processes, taking something that's very complex like search marketing or Facebook ads or whatever it is that you offer for your clients, and turning it into a streamlined, repeatable process. Right, something that becomes very easy for really anybody to drop in and essentially follow a checklist with it. Now you can't do that. Like you said, if you're working with everyone, if you're working with a contractor and then an e-commerce company and then a law firm and then, uh, I don't know, a, a doctor's office, each one of those, even if you're only doing SEO or SEM or whatever it is that you do, even if only a single service, every time you work with a different industry or vertical, you're essentially having to create a new process to deliver it because e-commerce is dramatically different than working with law firms. That's what we specialize in. So the first step before you can productize anything is specialization, right? So I have this concept that I talk a lot about in the book, probably my favorite chapter where it's all about what I call market offer fit. So if you're familiar with the product space like AirPods, right, or, or software, they have this concept called product market fit, where it's essentially, we're going to build a product to meet the needs, solve the pain points of a market, 
Um, so this concept of market offer fit is essentially building your offer or your service to meet the needs of the market that you're servicing, right? So just like Ahrefs, the SEO company continuously builds and develops new features for the SEO community. We don't do that in our service-based businesses, in the agency business, right? We're just like, hey, I do SEO. So if you can pay my retainer, I'll work with you, right? That's that's and the probably the number one reasons why most agencies struggle. They hit a cap and they don't scale and life becomes hell for them. And they, they think it's an awful business model. But when you specialize in working with a single type of vertical, like I said, our agency, work, we work with legal. We are, it bothers me when people say that we're like an SEO agency because we're not like our role is to solve customer acquisition problems for law firms, right? No matter what happens with Google, no matter what happens with Facebook, no matter what happens with Meta, Law firms come to us because we solve acquisition-based problems, right? Not because we do SEO, which is a commoditized service, not because we can do SEM, because we know how to generate leads profitably for those companies. If Google blows up tomorrow, it's our job as subject matter experts to understand what that next lead generation channel is and deploy that for our clients. So when you specialize, right, one, you're able to build system, true systems and processes, right? You're able to do the same thing over and over again, because... Every time we work with a law firm, dude, like during the sales scoping process, I already know exactly what we're doing, right? For the next 12 months, I can draw out on a map, on a sales call, exactly what to do for them because we've done it a thousand times over and over again. We've also now got a track record of results, right? And especially when you're working with law firms or contractors or whoever, they want to see that you are a specialist and you've got results for them before in the past. So you can build a track record, you can build systems and processes. And kind of like you said, I have a saying that I talk to my agency coaching clients where I say, a lot of you are a jack of all trades, but a master of none, right? It's great if you know how to do everything. It's great if you know how to do SEO for everyone, but you're not going to make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> and if you're in this business to make money, you got to specialize because once you specialize, again, then you can start to really systematize product and productize your service. And once you have a productized service, I mean, you know, because I know you're a big productization guy too, whether you call it productization or not, right? But it's the concept of putting very detailed systems and processes around it. Now everything on the back end of your business opens up. It becomes easy to hire. It becomes easy to train people. It becomes much more profitable because you don't have to go out and hire that technical SEO. That's going to cost you $150,000 a year to do technical audits. We don't do technical SEO because law firms don't need it. They have 20 page websites, right? So we're able to cut that part out and hyper, hyper specialize our service, which at the end of the day, the things that matters the most here is getting results for your clients. So like if you are stuck in terms of not being able to get consistent results. If you are stuck because your profit margins are bad and every time you take on a client, you find yourself having to do more and more work because the people that you hired in your mind aren't good enough to do it, right? It's it's because you're doing too much. <laughs> so strip it down, simplify it, focus on a very specific type of client, build a very hyper-specific type of offer, right? Which we can talk more about too, that meets the needs of what your clients needs, right? Which is going to be all acquisition-based stuff and then productize it. And then like I said, your business is going to open up in ways that you can't imagine. And now you can start to focus on what I call the next three pillars, which are like acquisition sales, right? A lot of agencies come to us and they're like, I have a lead generation problem. I'm like, no, you don't. You have a you have a client definition problem. Like you don't get leads because nobody wants SEO. Nobody's excited about SEO anymore. It's commoditized, right? It's not an exciting service anymore. It's not like a new offer. So if people are coming to you to do SEO, it's a very small part of the market. There's a book... Um, Hell's a book by Napoleon Hill, but whatever the five stages of awareness, right? We call, talked about the five stages of awareness. And I, I go through this a lot with consulting clients. A lot of people are like, yeah, no, I want to work with everyone because people still come to me and they're like, yeah, I want SEO. So like, I know that people still want SEO and I'm afraid to cut off one leg to grow. Right. But what I tell them is that they are focused all the way down to what's called stage one, right? The people that are in market saying, I want SEO, right? And those people, what they're doing is they're talking to 10 other agencies and they're price comparing you, right? When you're only doing that, it's a race to the bottom in pricing. That's why you're losing a lot of deals. That's why you can't go up market in terms of what you're charging, right? Even though I probably do, my agency probably does a fraction of the work that your agency does for your clients. We're so hyper-focused on law firms and we get such good results for them that we can charge in the margin, right? And what we're able to do is we're able to go up market in that five stages of awareness and focus on the problems that they're having, right? Which is where you want to be. You want to live in the problems of the business. You want to be solving problems. You don't want to be just like, hey, we do SEO. So anyone who wants SEO, you know, come to us, we'll do your SEO. It's commoditized. It's not a great way to run your business um, and it won't scale. And that's really the core reason why so many agencies hate what they do. <laughs> they think it's a bad business model. Um, they're working nonstop. And at the end of the day, they're not making any money. They're not taking anything home. They might make half a million dollars a year in revenue, but their actual take-home pay that they're putting on their personal W-2 is probably less than it would be if they just went to go work for another agency somewhere else. So 
It's a very long-winded answer on privatization. Right. Ed. Hopefully you got so, that. <laughs> so, good. So, so, so talk to me. So take, take me back 10, 15 years ago yeah. uh, or someone brand new to this. How would they identify what an appropriate offer or product is for a market? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, you have to start by defining the market, right? So inside of the blueprint training, we actually have a really good training system where we, I call it market positioning, right? That's like finding your who. So once you define the who, then you can start to define the what, which is the offer, this concept of market offer fit. So if we're looking at law firms as an example, right? If we say, okay, we're going to specialize in law firms, we have a whole checklist of questions that we run people through because I call it, again, even though I learned SEO in a Facebook group, we have a Facebook group. I call it like Facebook group SEO advice, which is usually uh, my way of saying it's bad advice, um, which they're like, yeah, select a niche. So they're like, yeah, I want to do contractors or roofers. And they know nothing about the industry. They know nothing about who's on the other side. They know nothing about their business model. They know nothing about how they make money. If you don't know that, then you can't make them an offer to help them make more money. So the first thing that you have to do is pick a vertical that, especially if you're in the search marketing, these are like four criteria that I give everyone. One, the result of what you do has to result in more leads or more revenue. Right. What I mean by that is like, let's look at gyms, for example. It's like, I want to work with gyms, right? And you decide that you're going to do SEO for gyms. People don't go to Google and type in, I want to find a gym and join a gym. And if they do, it's a very small amount. There's search volume around it, but the number of customers that you have to acquire for that gym, for them to make money on what you're going to charge them and you charging them an amount where you're going to make money, yep. it's it's nearly impossible, right? People use social media. They're getting referrals or asking friends. They're on Instagram. That's how people are finding gyms. So if you want to take SEO and jam it on a gym, it's why you're not making money because you're taking a square peg and jamming around holes. It's, it's a it's a mismatch of, of, of market and offer. But when we look at law firms or when we look at contractors or plastic surgeons, people are going to Google and they're typing in, I got in a car accident. I need a lawyer. And the result of that search ends up in a phone call, which usually ends up in a good lead or revenue for that business, right? So that's step one is that if you're going to do SEO or search marketing, you have to make sure that the result of that is going to result in more revenue or more leads. And a lot of people lie to themselves about it. Like I look at e-commerce, right? And I'm not picking on e-commerce, but I'm kind of picking on e-commerce and SaaS too. And like the state of SaaS, as an example, is when you search for like best software, right? You're getting like Captera, you're getting like G2 Crowd. You're not actually getting like actual listings, like paid search maybe, but for the most part, the SERPs are telling us that people want to shop around. They want to see reviews. They're not really looking to find your website. So like those bottom funnel direct conversion keywords aren't really good fit. So what do people do in SaaS? They build content and they build long form content, which is extremely time consuming, extremely difficult because you have to be a subject matter expert. SaaS clients are educated. They know what they're looking for and it's expensive. And the result of content you can argue me till you blue in the face does not directly result in conversions. It might assist in conversions. It might, you know, you might be able to attribute that somewhere on the path, but it doesn't directly result in conversions. And if you're not directly impacting conversions, again, you're pushing a boulder uphill. It's going to be really, really hard for you to grow a business if you're not directly impacting somebody's top line revenue. So you have to be brutally honest with yourself in terms of if you're going to do search marketing, right? Or Facebook ads or whatever it is, like, is this the best app, the absolute best way for that? XYZ to get clients or to get more revenue, right? And with law firms, it's a perfect fit. Uh, and so that's criteria one. Like, does the result of this end up in more customers too? And we were talking about this a little bit offline. Uh, is the result of that conversion enough to pay for my services like fivefold, tenfold, right? So when we talk about like e commerce, I used to run a shoelaces store. I, it's called Laces Out, and I ended up selling it. It was an e commerce store years ago. You probably remember that, right? Yeah. And what I learned from that was that. When you're selling something that's ten dollars, you have I to. I remember being like, "Wow, that's a lot of clicks." A lot of customers, man. Yeah, I had to get a lot of customers. I owned it fully, and we ran completely on search. I didn't do any paid traffic, so I was making money, and I was making like you know twenty grand a month, but which was good, especially at that time. But the level of effort that it took to maintain that, plus the operational side, which we don't need to get into. But if you were going to service me as an as an agency, right? you would probably need just for the level of effort and scope, like four to five thousand dollars a month, because it was a lot of work. But like the amount of customers that you would have to get me in order for me to justify paying you that, it, it, it just didn't make sense. The economics of it didn't make sense. So I like to go after industries that have a very high customer value, law firms, right? Injury, accident, divorce, we're talking $50,000 and up per case, right? So if they're one is defined search volume, two, people are using Google to find them and convert and call them and have business conversations. And three, the value of those conversations is very high. It doesn't matter what I'm doing for them. If I can get them ranked or I can get them calls from paid search, I can charge in the margin, 
right? Which means it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what deliverables I do. It doesn't matter what I'm sending you. It matters if I'm making you more money. And I think this is also what makes SEOs especially very uncomfortable because it's become this industry of like, how do I say this nicely? Because SEOs always love to attack me on, on Twitter and, and YouTube. It's become a service of, it's become a professional service, which means people are treating it more like a job than like an entrepreneur treats a business. Because at the end of the day, again, like an entrepreneur understands like this is about making money, period. Like, and, and that makes a lot of SEOs uncomfortable because they got into this business, about, again, through like cute research, learning about technical SEO, and that's great. But the direct result of those things usually doesn't result in more customers and clients. And we start talking about saying, hey, you have to have an offer that makes people more money. They get very uncomfortable. But it's because you're doing that for the wrong people. If you align that with a is industry or vertical that is going to directly benefit from your services, then you've got an explosive offer. Then you've got something that you can stack. Then you've got something that you can scale, right? So we were talking about this a little bit before offline where you know, your eyes lit up too. And we were t- I was telling you our average case of client value is about $6,000 at our agency. And you were like, damn. <laughs> you, when you think about the amount of margin that, that creates in our business, and it's literally the same amount of work that we would be doing for a $600 a month client actually probably even less because we've got it so hyper-specialized and we've got everything so hyper-templatized. And my whole sales process with law firms isn't talking about SEO. It's talking about results. It's talking about search demand in their area. And it's talking about how many leads they can expect as a result of working with us, whether that's paid and organic. And I'm able to paint a very clear picture for them. That's not about keyword rankings. It's about money. And they can quantify that by then saying, okay, now I understand that for every local area that I'm in, right? We usually work with law firms that have multiple locations. If I'm in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm, each one of those markets should be producing 80 leads per month for me, right? And 80 leads per month will probably turn into 100 to $250,000 a month in client revenue if my if my sales processes are tight. So when I send them a quote for $6,000, right? Against their expected revenue off of that, it becomes a no brainer for them, right? And that's kind of the area that we want to live in. So when we talk about like building an offer, right? If you're not comfortable with SEO because you know it takes too long or it's too competitive, then you can start to add in other things like paid search. That's why we do paid search now. So we have the, we have this whole thesis now, what we call this blended search model where law firms are coming to us because all the marketing that we're doing is pure problem-based marketing, right? We're not like, hey, we do SEO and paid search, come work with us. We're like, yeah, like it's competitive out there, law firms. And that for every 250 people in this country, there is one lawyer. That's nuts if you think about it, right? Like that's a huge thing for us in terms of bringing people in. We're like, it's competitive. It's only getting more competitive. It's expensive. It's only getting more expensive. And there's law firms out there that are spending just to suppress your voice. So therefore, come book an analysis with us and we'll show you the areas of opportunity in search engines. There's local search, there's LSAs, there's pay-per-click, there's content opportunities. But you've worked with that agencies before because they're just throwing a generic strategy at you. We understand the intimate needs of your business because all we do is work with law firms. We've worked with hundreds of law firms. We've helped hundreds of law firms get more leads, get more cases, get more clients because we're actually paying attention to the margin, to the detail because all we do is work with law firms. So we're obsessed with it. That's all we care about. Um, So we come in, we do an analysis for them. We basically just look at their keyword universe and we say, okay, this is the total search demand in each one of your markets. Um, And then we look at cost per click. And we look at kind of like level of competition. We build them a map saying for these keywords, like we should use paid search for these keywords. We should go after organically local maps pack, et cetera. We put that in front of them. Um, and then we've got an offer in front of them that shows them exactly kind of like what their revenue potential is in those markets. And it becomes much easier. So when we talk about building an offer, we're now hitting these things where it's like, okay, we've got SEO, which if they don't want to pay for the additional cost for paid search up front, then we'll fall back on that. Especially local SEO is kind of our top offer. We crush with local SEO offers. And it's actually the best thing that a business can, a law firm can do because um, it's where most of the clicks go. Um, but then we say, okay, if you don't want to wait six months, well, let's do a paid campaign, right? Uh, and we'll get you your phone, phone ringing in 14 days. And if if you're feeling really froggy and you want to really scale, then let's do both and let's take over your entire market. And that's like $10,000 and up campaigns. So we've kind of thought through this whole process of like who our market is, what their problems are, what they're experiencing with other agencies, what our competition is pitching them. Um, and then we put together an offer that thinks through all those things, almost like thinking through the sales objections up front and our offer, which is just SEO and SEM. It's not like we're doing anything special, but we know how to massage that to make it fit and how to communicate that to our market. So now we're in this situation where we're just pumping more money into marketing, more money into ads, and the more conversations that we have with these law firms, um, you know, our sales close rate is amazing. We're growing at a clip that we've never grown before because of this whole concept of offer market fit and understanding what their problems are and really what they've been impacted before in the past and showing them that 
you're going to make money doing this. And that's all we care about is making you money. Um, which again, a lot of SEO agencies, we see other proposals, love other, our clients love to send us proposals from other agencies. And I'm like, y'all are just sending them to, like, they don't want deliverables. <laughs> they don't care about keywords, man. They don't care about a technical SEO audit. If anything, they're like, oh, I have to do this again. Cause I've worked with three agencies before in the past and they did an audit and it did nothing, you know? And we're like, we don't do audits. We don't care. We know like I, I, I'm I, looking at your website during the sales process and I'm telling you exactly what's wrong. We're doing the audit right now. You don't have to pay us for that. Like you're paying us for results. You're paying us for clients. You're paying us for cases. And when we're having that conversation and then there's another agency, your agency that's pitching them like, oh yeah, like we look at all the keyword research we do and here's a 12 month plan and like all the stuff we're going to send you. It's it's a no brainer for them because they're like, we're going to go with Ryan because like this is all he does. And like they're talking about, they're speaking our language. We care about money. That's what we care about. We're not paying you to do work for us. We're paying you to make us money, period. That's it. So when you shift to that mindset and you understand that you exist as a marketing agency to make people more money and nothing else matters, then you optimize your entire service, your entire marketing, everything around that. Um, and that's when you start to have that like real success within you know the service business. So very nice. Okay. Um, something you mentioned there uh, on the sales front, uh, I know it as like value-based selling. Yep. Where did you where did you learn that? Was that just kind of a um, an organic discovery, like selling, or did you learn it from books? Like, how did you go towards the the value-based uh, sales approach, getting paid for what you're delivering and selling based on the deliverable uh, or the uh, the results of the deliverable as opposed mm-hmm. to the deliverable? Yeah, so I would say a couple like. I'm constantly spending money on training programs on, I wouldn't say coaches and consultants because a lot of them are full of shit, but like I'm constantly, especially in the legal space, I'm trying to learn as much as possible and see what else is out there uh, and fill in the gap. So like to answer your question short is that it's an ongoing process, right? Like I'm just continuously learning new things and putting them in trial and error and then growing from it. But I would say two people that have probably helped me the most in thinking this would be Alex Hormozzi, who I'm kind of down on, but like Hormozzi's whole kind of like book that came out a couple of years ago with about offers, like really open. That was kind of like one of the things that like really connected the dots for me. I was like, oh, yeah. this makes sense, yeah. <laughs> right? Like people want to make money. That's why they're paying me. And you kind of know that as a marketer, but until you, and I think it takes a certain level of confidence in your skill set and your team skill set to be able to put that to the forefront. Because I used to go through that too. If you go back to the blueprint training, we've been in business for seven years and you look at our initial trainings, I ne- I'll never forget. And I own everything about what I've said on the internet and what I've taught people. Um, but I remember building a training that was like showing them how to build a 12 month project plan. And I remember in the training, I was saying like, okay, we're going to throw in like a Google search console audit here because we want to pepper them with deliverables because we want to make sure that we're always sending them stuff. Right. And I thought that doing more equated to more for the client, yeah. but they don't like, they don't care about that. You right. know, they, they just don't. So Hormozu was very helpful. Um, traffic and funnels back in the day too, like put a lot of the stuff on my radar as well, you know, just kind of like contrarian thinking, because again, in the SEO space, you learn much more from people that are talking much more about the tactics, right. And not necessarily about the psychology and the business side of it. So uh, Hormozu has been great. Traffic and funnels was great. A lot of people in the space, um, have kind of helped me to to do this. And then again, when you layer this on top of a specific industry, and then you take the insights from that industry, right? Because e-commerce is different. SaaS is different, right? Like I can't speak to the needs of those clients. As, 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 like if you look at SaaS, again, we used to work with a lot of SaaS companies and they pretty much all had internal marketing managers and their goals were different. They weren't necessarily as concerned with like lead generation MQLs. They were concerned a little bit more with budget because they had a budget to spend. They were concerned with content quality. That's why I want to get out of it because I was like, I don't want to get in this game where like we're, we become a content editing company where we're just, you're sending us edits for a three month period to get one freaking blog post that 10 people are going to see, right? Like this isn't what we want to do here. You're making more work from us. Um, so, you know, when you apply these things to specific industries and you understand what they care about, you understand what their expectations of you are, Right. And then the more conversations you have, the more you do it, the more refined it becomes. Um, But at the core of what we do here, especially in the search industry, somewhere along the line, it got lost because, um, you know, I say it all the time that this this became this has become a professional services industry like IT. Right. It became an expense as opposed to an investment. And like you always want to keep in mind that you are an investment. You want to be pitching yourself as an investment. If you pay us X, you should expect X plus Y. Right. Um, Over. X, Y, Z time periods. Not if you pay us X, you're going to get keyword research and technical audits. Like you have to tie it to an outcome. If you can tie it to an outcome, then it's going to be much easier for you to close deals and also attract people in because you understand what they care about, which is money. Right, right. And, and in so you were, let's back up there because you said something interesting. Um, 
think about a an agency that sells to recurring customers or customers who whose service is recurring, not a, a chunk like a remodeler, a roofer, a uh, personal injury attorney. Um, how would you go about teaching that agency to talk to their clients about um, customer lifetime value, um, not getting a return on that particular month versus the return yeah. is going to be long, long term? Like walk through how you would coach uh, an agency that's dealing with someone with lower lower market value, even if you even if you would, or you would just say, hey, get into a bigger niche, you know, a higher LTV niche. No, that's a great question. So, it, so it depends on your offer, right? So, like, let's say the offer is on the open open for debate here, right? You you really have to move to a paid offer, right? Some sort of paid traffic because otherwise you can't do much forecasting and baselining, and the numbers have to be on point. So, like. I know this because the blueprint training, the offer on the back of this is a community that's 200 bucks a month. It comes with training, comes with whatever, blah, blah, blah. If we're just sitting there and doing like SEO projections on that, it's, 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 it's damn near impossible to, 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 to help them and understand how to grow. Right. And then you become a service provider that they're like wishing and hoping for, as opposed to somebody that becomes lockstep with their business model and their business success. Right. Like, for example, I told, uh, we were talking before, but like meta ads are a huge part of our business. Like meta ads run this business. Like, I cannot turn off our meta ads or this business will die. Um, and that's partially by design, as bad as that might sound, but it's partially by design. I'm comfortable with that because we understand if we put a thousand dollars in what we're going to get in terms of emails, what we're going to get in terms of conversion rates and building out the full funnel. Right. So the approach that we take there is we are willing to take up to a three X loss on customers to acquire somebody into that program. Because when we look at our LTV data, right, our churn data, our churn is 13% out of that community. So we know that for every, you know, 10 people that we sign up in here, that nine are going to be with us for three months or more. So we're saying that we're willing to pay $600 per customer there on a $200 customer value up front, understanding that the future of that customer, plus we have upsells and cross sells, you know, that will push them through as well. So it's easier for me to sit here and say that because I have full control over the the service or they offer Facebook ads, the content, and then also the offer that we're providing in terms of price elasticity. We can raise our price. We can upsell, cross sell. So if you're working with a client, um, one, like you've got to probably work with them to, you've you probably got to get some sort of flexibility with them in terms of offers, right? Because if you're going to be selling something from paid traffic, like you've got to understand how to put in upsells, cross sells, down sells to recoup money on paid because paid can add up very quickly and you can spend a lot of money and, and not have a lot to show for it, right? Two, you have to intimately understand the economics of their business. If they don't have their information, if they're selling a recurring product and they don't know what their churn is, like you can't work with them. It's just not, I mean, you can, but it's probably not going to last for very long, right? So we do a lot. Um, so my third company, Ryan Stewart Consulting, I do a lot of fractional CMO work. And part of what I usually do a lot of there is is like a VSL funnel on Meta. If you've ever seen any of my stuff, you've probably been in one of my VSLs before on Meta. Uh, it's basically an eight to 10 minute video that dives into a very specific pain point topic with our audience and then offers a solution at the end, which is usually, you know, like uh, access to our community or something like that. So we do a lot of coaching consulting around that. And what we end up having to do a lot of is a lot of offer design for them because they're trying to sell something that's either too low or too high. And it you, you got to understand kind of like, you got to be able to map your offer to the traffic source as well, right? Like with Meta, you're probably not going to get Fortune 100 CEOs in the door, right? You're just not. So you've got to be able to understand that if you're going to make and scale this traffic source work, and that's for any traffic source too, right? If you're going to make that traffic source work, you've got to be able to massage your business's offer um, and have some sort of elasticity around it. That's why like we've been approached by some major like especially SEO software to do marketing for them. And like, I can't, like, I can't work within your numbers. It's just, it just doesn't work for us, you know? And like, that's why we don't do a lot of kind of like corporate or, or larger marketing. And that's why law firms are such a good fit for us because it's like, we don't have to worry about the numbers as much. We're just like, okay, if you're paying us $5,000 a month and we get you one client per month, you're going to make money, period. That's it, right? So I, I don't want to say the bar is low, but the bar is pretty low in terms of like volume gain, right? Like that's why I don't like to get into e-commerce or economies of scale, because then you have to have some sort of like viral um, amplifier, if you will, organic in order to like really hit the customer acquisition numbers that you need. And that's always a bad idea to hire an agency for that. Like that needs to be done in house, like any sort of like ongoing content, um, thought leadership content. If you try and outsource that, it's just never going to work. So it's another thing that I would stay away from as an agency as well. Like that's why I don't touch social media, especially organic social media, with like a 10 foot pole, pole for clients. Cause I'm like, you have to create content multiple times per day. And if you can't do that, if you can't ideate that, like 
I'm not going to sit here and we're not going to build a spreadsheet for you with like how to like all these TikToks that you need to build. It just doesn't make sense. Like you, there's certain things that I, we tell our clients, especially at law firms too, like you either don't do it or you have to learn how to do it. But if you pay somebody to do it, you're always going to lose money on it. And again, that goes into offers and like market understanding why so many agencies struggle because they're like, oh, TikTok is like the new platform, which I agree with, right? TikTok's a great place. But the economics of doing business there, especially organically, they just don't really make sense and they just don't really work. Um, and it's really hard to meet those numbers. And that's why we stick with search in boring so, industries. I was just going to say, so if I'm hearing correctly, if I was starting over from scratch, it's going to be a mixture of, of SEO, PPC, and Facebook ads as the core offer? I mean, I so to answer that shortly, like, yes, is those are platforms I would stick to because they're mature and like, you understand what you're getting, even though they're not really sexy anymore. Um, and you know, the biggest downside of trying to sell SEO. And that's why I said, like, I get mad when people say that we do SEO because I'm like, I don't like to be pigeonholed as SEO. Like we do SEO because that right now is the best way for law firms to get clients. But if a software company was going to approach me, I wouldn't do SEO for them. I would probably do like meta or LinkedIn or something like that, you know? So for like, if I'm giving advice to somebody who's in the agency consulting freelancer business, I would say, yes, I would say stick with industries that have a high ticket. I don't like high ticket because then it sounds like a coaching program, like a high customer value, right? So like plastic surgeons, roofers, contractors, home services, like and when I say high, like high value, I don't know, call it $500 or more, right? Because then you can live in the margin, right? If you charge $500 a month, you get the one client per month, they're never going to fire you, <laughs> right? At, at worst, you're a wash, you're a break-even cost, right? And you're always going to live in their books and you'll be profitable on that if you're highly productized. So but if you're getting into like e-commerce and you're trying to do, I don't know, like Facebook ads or even SEO, like it's really, really tough, man, because the 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 economics of their business don't really align with what you need to be able to charge. And again, that's why like, you know, I do a lot of consulting with e-commerce. E-commerce needs SEO. I'm not saying it doesn't need SEO, but like when you look at how people use Google to find e-commerce based products, right? Like Christmas seasons here, we're all doing Christmas shopping online. Like I'm looking for a new couch for a house. Like I have 30 tabs open. <laughs> I am using it much more for like top funnel discovery to like narrow it in, right? And then I usually go to Amazon to buy it or I usually go directly to the retailer to buy it, right? Like, so SEO has a, an attribution path to, to, draw, to push that purchase. But for the most part, it's not the best channel to like acquire customer. Then it's also really difficult to attribute it because then you also have like social media, like TikTok is probably like the best, true top funnel Pinterest is really good too. But so I guess what I'm saying is that if like you stick to proven boring industries, right? That's what I like. And it's not sexy at all, right? At all. But like home services are, it's a proven space. I know you know this, you do a ton of home services stuff, right? It's a proven space, right? And what I mean by proven is one is that like, they're not going to do it on their own. Law firms, are, law firms, contractors, roofers, they're not going to do their own marketing. They can't. They need you, right? So like there's inherent need that they need to do and they're willing and it comes baked into their brain that they need to pay an agency. So they're always on the lookout for an agency. Two, people will continue, customers will continue to use those channels, like especially search to find that business, right? Whereas like TikTok or even Facebook, right? Like we have our law firms asking us to do Facebook ads for them all the time. And I'm like, I don't want to put in the time and effort to try and figure out how to get people to, to get to sign up for a personal injury lawyer while scrolling down Instagram while they're taking a dump. Like it's not, it's not like, like that's not, a, I don't have the time and bandwidth to do that. Like that's not what we do here, you know? Um, so like search again, like if like we're now we're getting like very complicated talking about like SG and stuff, but like we've already done the testing in SG, like the local maps pack is like protected in SG. Like they're not getting rid of that. It's a product that Google likes that customers like that people will continue to use to find businesses, right? And if that business has a high enough customer value, they will always be willing to pay you because there will always be a direct path from that traffic source to their top line revenue or pipeline, whatever it is, right? So like, that's why I said, like, it's really, really important that you are brutally honest with yourself and you ask yourself, like, if I was looking for this business, like, would I really go to Google or would I really hire them off of Facebook or like, what would be my, what is like the most likely path that I would follow to find this business? And if it's aligns with what you do best, right? Whether that's meta, TikTok, Google, then like that is a, it has the potential to be good offer. I'll say it's good offer, it's potential to be good offer. So like, that's why like when I do consulting with people, 
you know, I tell them that like, I'll help them on a one hour call, like drill into a niche. And I usually just give them ones that I know that are going to work. Right. Like one that I tell people all the time right now is like male. I don't know if I call it like male plastic surgery, but like what I really like about it is that if you're active on social media, like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, you see a lot of like informational content from guys like Dr. Huben, even like Joe Rogan, like talking about different things, like for men, right. That have traditionally kind of maybe been stigmatized, like male plastic surgery, hair replacement, testosterone, all these different things. So people are getting highly, highly educated and lubed up, if you will, on these other platforms. And then where do they go? They go to Google to actually convert that search, yep. right. To look for somebody locally for them. So like I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you want kind of like an emerging industry, that's probably not going to be too red ocean, if you will, as agencies, I would do like, like, like anything in the male, like testosterone, PRP, hair replacement. Like these are like big, big money searches with a lot of volume that are coming in waves warmed up from social media, right? Going to Google to then convert. And there's a very high customer value. And also Google is protected by that too, because it's very personal. Like people aren't posting on their Instagram story. Like, Hey, like anybody like I do like testosterone doctor that they can recommend. Like it's it, it, so like Google is kind of, when I say like protected, I mean that like that platform is protected by the external factors that people are going to continue to use that to find their need there. Right. Same thing with contractors, right? Like people ask for referrals for sure, but like, you know, like pressure washing, dude, like shooting fish in a barrel, man. Like you, you Google pressure, like plumbers, Google plumber. Like you call the first one, they come like, that's it. (laughs) Like it's not that complicated of a process. Like reviews are important for ranking, but like, oh, he's reading reviews, man. They're calling you have a conversation when you show up 250 bucks, like boom, it's done, you know? Um, so also too, like there, uh, so we're starting to get very t- surgical here, but like, like I like HVAC too, because HVAC is like, I'm in Florida. And like, if your air conditioner is busted, like you're like, no, I need you here now. <laughs> like there's a sense of urgency with that lead too, where it's like, yeah. I talk to lawyers and they're like, yeah, I don't know, maybe in six months from now, I'm like, why the fuck are you wasting my time? Like, don't, don't call me now then. Like, don't book a call with me now. But like for HVAC, it's like, no, dude, my air conditioning is busted. Like I'll pay you extra to get here today. Cause I have family here and they're boiling. It's a hundred degrees outside, you know? So like, there's all like, these are the types of things that you need to be thinking about when you're selecting a niche. It's not just like, oh, people are going to Google and they're searching for plumbers. So like, therefore I'm going to work with a plumber. Like you have to understand the other factors because we're talking about building a business here. We're not talking about making money and like ripping off like a couple hundred grand here and there. Like if you want to build an agency business, that's going to be here for the next 10, 15, 20 years, right? You want to align yourself with a vertical. That's going to make sense with the offer that you're driving to them. Right. And again, this is where so many agencies go wrong. They just go into Facebook. They're like, what's the best niches for agencies? It's like, think, man, like you're starting a business, like think for yourself. Like you have to go through this process. How much, how much uh, knowledge should they have about a space before jumping into it versus (laughs) from today, moving forward, they're in all the forums, they're in all the Facebook groups, they're learning as much as they possibly can. They're reading the books. We're making that assumption that's happening because that's what they should be doing. But how much, how much should they know prior to uh, joining a niche? I mean, ideally some, but like, I didn't know anything about legal space when I jumped in, you know, I just, I just didn't. And I've learned so much about it. Like at some point in like, so what we did too, because this is a question that we get a lot. They're like, okay, let's say like, I, like okay, Ryan, you convinced me. Like I'm going to do, you know, male, I don't know, whatever, male, male plastic surgery. Like, I don't know anything about it though. Do I have to like change my logo and branding and website? And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. Right. You just have to figure out one traffic source. So like, we're really good at pay traffic. So we set up ClickFunnels landing pages on a subdomain that just drove people to a VSL video that it was me doing my best at that time to explain why SEO was so impactful for like why SEO was the best. You can go to my YouTube channel and see it. Why SEO is the best source of leads for law firms, right? I put that out, booked some calls and like the more conversations I had, the more I learned. I learned, like, I didn't know, I didn't know that like about accident and injury law. I didn't know that like what, uh, contingency. Well, I didn't know any of this stuff. Right. But like when your business depends on it and you realize like, Oh, okay. The more, like the more that I learn, the better conversation that I can have with these people, um, the better that this is going to sell. Like everything in life, man, is putting one foot in front of the other and just walking, just do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and a lot of these things, like, you know, like I said, like we were doing SaaS for a while and like, that was the path I was walking on for a year. And then we got to the point where I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to put my team through this anymore. Like I'm exhausted talking to these people. Like they just ask too much all the, and they're working on a budget. Right. And that was where like, I was like, well, we have a couple of law firms. We're doing really well for them. They, we never hear from them. So like, maybe why don't we start trying this vertical as well? So, 
you know, to, to answer your question, you don't have to know a lot. When we go put people through, we have a questionnaire that like ask them kind of like, what do you have experience with? Do you have like a couple of case studies that you can refer to? Like, what have you gotten results for? What do you enjoy doing? What do you inherently know a lot about? Just to kind of get the ball rolling, like whiteboard these things, put them things out there. Um, and then, you know, just, just start doing it. Um, but you know, we're talking about building a business and you can attest this too. You're running a business for a decade, right? Like every single day, you're still walking for in the same path and like building and growing and learning and changing and tinkering. Yeah. So it's never done. You know, it's never yeah. done. One of our, our core values is uh, better never stops. And it's constant improvement. It's I like that, yeah. mentioned one foot in front of the other. It's the idea of, of not stopping learning. I hated yeah. learning when uh, growing in college. And I hated reading. Then once I found something I actually enjoyed reading, it's I read nonstop. I listen to audiobooks nonstop. I watch YouTube videos nonstop to learn and just get better. And the idea of um, you know spending the majority of the time sharpening the axe, hundred percent, hundred percent. And your family's money depends on it now too. It's different when you're in school. You're yeah. like you're kind of in a situation where you we were culturally forced to go there because yep. they thought it was best best for us. Um, but like yeah, I never thought that I would be. I'm writing a book now with a, an author, like a co-author, about like the legal like not even legal marketing so much, but like the state of legal right now in law firms. And I'm like, I never thought I'd be doing this. Cause like, to be blunt, like I couldn't give a shit about the legal space. Right. Really, it's actually a pretty dirty space when I've really gotten into it. But like, man, I got kids, you know what I'm saying? I got to feed them. And I, like, I want to provide a future for them. And like, I run a business to make money. And like, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't apologize for that at all. Like I am 100% here to make money. That's it. Like I have my personal life. I have my home life. I got my family life. But like when I'm working, I'm working. And the whole point here is to make money. And I do that not by being a greedy bastard, but by providing as much value to people because that's how I know I'm going to make money, right? So like once you understand that and you're comfortable with that, like I don't see that statement that I just made as a bad thing. Like I tell that to my law firm clients. I'm like, I'm here to make money just like you're here to make money and I'm going to make you money and that's going to make me money. And that's all I care about. And they're like, yes, <laughs> like let's go. Like that's what I want to hear, you know? And if they don't, then they don't. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, it's it's a whole different ballgame when, uh, when you're, it's your business, right? Because there's a certain level of um, additional, I don't know, just brain boost that you get from it, right? Mm -hmm. it just, yeah. yeah, for for good and for bad. It's you, you can't you bear the weight of it, uh, the full enjoyment of it. You also bear the weight of it when things are stressful. So I, I get both sides of that. I love it. It's uh, I agree with you 100. percent So um, can you hold up the book one more time? All right. If you guys want to grab a copy of the book, there will be a link in the description here. It's the Agency Blueprint. Um, it'll be there. Um, we agreed that the book is not going to be free. So don't be a cheap bastard. Go on to Amazon and buy the book. Um, I think Ryan said it was $2 on two Amazon. Bucks, man. It's two yeah. bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's as cheap as I possibly could because I'm not here to make money off this book. It's um, really just kind of like, uh, I look at it kind of as a new blog post, right? It's just, um, it, it, it's everything that I know about building an agency business. I didn't want to make it like a $300 book. Like I've seen some people doing, I just want this information out there. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, it's the blueprint.training. I will put a link below. Anything else you want to leave before we uh, wrap up? That's it, man. Ed, I really appreciate you having me on, man. Absolutely.